Hello, welcome to The Real Deal with Sean Matthews. Here is another guest, a special guest that I have on today, somebody different. I love all my different guests on this podcast where we have real conversations with real business owners and real people, hearing their stories and how they got started. So today I have a special guest here and her name is Leanne Shelton. Leanne Shelton with a background in sales and marketing plus over 15 years of writing and editorial experience. Leanne started Right Time Marketing as a freelance copywriter in 2014. These days, she offers content marketing, strategic advanced training, and copywriting for health and wellness practitioners. I love that. She loves empowering her clients to step up and show up more online. Her aim is to help her clients gain more structure and strategy in their business, enabling them to stand out from the crowd and spread their message effectively and efficiently. I love that. Leanne, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Sean. I'm excited to be here. Hello. It's fantastic. And it's really rainy here in um, the Gold Coast. And, And where are you today? I'm in Sydney and it's especially rainy here. <laughs> Has not stopped. It's, uh, I'm very lucky. I mean, where I'm living, um, yeah, I'm not I'm high up. I'm not affected. But there's people who are only maybe 15, 20 minutes down the road who are like their roads are trapped and things. So not great. But my husband's in, with the RFS and so he was been helping out a little bit the last few days where he can. Um, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, thankfully we're all safe and well here. Yes, that's good. Yeah, keep inside where it's safe and dry, right? That's yeah. how I have I have that feeling today too. And in my background, people people can't see it if they're listening to the audio, but in my background, I have a picture of a beach, <laughs> so that uh, I feel like I'm in the sun, in the sunset, instead of the rain. <laughs> so, um, thank you very much for coming on, Leanne. Really appreciate your time and energy. For being on this episode we just met what five minutes ago and uh i love how we met um through a networking group and how we all help each other grow and learn so today i'd really like to hear more about you and your background so you live in sydney um what's what's the story of leanne just maybe a little brief summary of married maybe kids i think you have yeah, all right, so for me, um, yes, yeah, so I've lived in Sydney my whole life, um, different parts though. I grew up southwest Sydney and now I'm in northwest Sydney. Um, I'm married, been married for 12 and a half years, um, and two daughters, uh, seven and four, uh, that keep us on our toes. Um, and yes, <laughs> that's an understatement. They're both very strong willed girls, which is good, you know, good, good future leaders. Yeah. Um, right now, I've got to have the patience for them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, bring on the teenage years. Not. Um, yeah, so I basically, yeah, I'd started my business around the time that my eldest. I, I was on maternity leave with her and I started doing some newsletters for like some sporting organizations. And I had this idea, what if I started a business doing newsletters for other business owners and had that flexibility around my young family. And um, wow. it kind of went from there. I met a website designer and um, she goes, Hey, can you write website copy? I'm like, sure. Why not? And yeah. learn about SEO writing. And, um, and then it just kind of went from there. So initially was around that whole flexibility around the family thing. And it's great because I do have that time to, you know, go to the, the Easter hat parade coming up and um, I'm involved with the PNC and I can do that stuff um, and still do work that I love. So yeah. wow. that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And your background is really sales and marketing. So you have that behind you. What's the history? Like how long have you were, how long were you in sales and marketing and yep. how does that help your business now? Yeah, well, like I, I knew I wanted to get into like journalism or some sort of writing career because I've always been a writer since I was a kid and picked up punctuation just like that. Um, and so I, but my first, I did a lot of work experience during like high school and uni at magazines and newspapers and uh, ABC and oh, radio and all this kind of stuff. 
And um, but I realised it's going to ha- be hard to get into any of that work fresh out of uni. So I actually started in a telesales role, which was part of um, a true local. So part of News Limited. I thought, oh, there's great connections there. And that was awesome because one, it made me really comfortable with the phone, which has been a really good, obviously, marketing now my business. I'm not afraid to pick up the phone. Yeah. Um, and two, I was dealing with business owners from the plumbers, the accountants, the lawyers, and I got used to speaking to different business owners, which has also benefited where I am now because I can work with anyone and speak to anyone. Yeah. Um, and so from there, that kind of then moved into those internal communications. And then um, I ended up going to another company and having being in a marketing role there, um, at not for profit. Oh, and wow. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And so it was a oh. disability organization uh-huh. and I, that was very rewarding. And I was doing events, a bit of PR, a bit of the, the writing, um, great variety. And I heard about this communications type role and yeah. And then I moved on to being a part of the marketing team then at um, Macquarie university. And so I, I I always kind of moved towards the writing projects and I could, I put my hand up like the sport, the Aquatic Centre magazine and whatever. Um, But yeah, so I kind of picked up a lot of, I studied creative writing at uni, um, but along the way I picked up the sales, I picked up the marketing and then with my business, I'm like, well, uh, I need to, like, I'm not just a copywriter. Like I'm not just give me a brief and I can write it really well. Uh I can but I'll also give the holistic approach and question it going, all right, putting the marketing hat on is doing a flyer, the right strategy for you. Um, putting the sales hat on, how are you then going to convert once this goes through and all that? So I've um, then fallen more into the strategy side, which covers all those things. Mm. So it's like, yes, I can write it for you, but do you get where your blogs and your emails fit into the big picture? Let me help you with that strategy. Mm, yeah, wow, that's interesting because my background is a counsellor and it was always difficult for me to, at the beginning, to market myself in particular mm-hmm. and even coaches sometimes uh, struggle with marketing themselves in the right way. And as you said, you help with the holistic side, which is fantastic because not a lot of people know that strategy and how to do it. So can you share some tips maybe what you would do with a client that's in health and wellness? Yeah. So yeah, I moved into the health and wellness space uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm just fascinated by alternative therapies and, uh, you know, open-minded things, high food intolerances. I've always been conscious of my health and things. And at networking events, I just gravitate towards those people. Yeah. And also when I'm <laughs> writing, the writing just flows so much easier when I'm writing here yeah, for the counsellors or the meditation experts or um, yoga teachers or whatever. So um, in terms of, yeah, I find a lot of the health and wellness people, they have like big visions and they want to, you know, make a difference, but they find it hard to get that structure and know how to prioritise. So I usually just kind of bring them back like, Let's just simplify. Yes, you can do all these different things, but what, what's most important? What are you going to focus on first? And also, who's your target audience? Pick one, at least to begin with, and yeah. get that right. Because then if you are trying to target everyone, I have a lot of people say, it. I target anyone who wants to eat healthy. Oh, it's yeah. like, okay, but you can't then get your message a hundred percent right when you're trying to speak to everyone, men, women, children from not to a hundred, 120. Yeah. So you need to go um, have that avatar. Mm. I really have. And you can have multiple avatars, but maybe just start with one and go, all right, let's start with women who are between uh, 30 and 45, who've got kids that are experiencing burnout. What do they need? What are their pain points? and then put together messaging based on their pain point, your solution, how does that kind of interrelate? Yeah, fantastic. I absolutely love that because a lot of women, even men too, they don't know what their avatar is. And when I first started my business, I didn't really know what my avatar was. I was going to work with men and women that I went to women. And then I thought, oh, what age do I need to, to go to? 
and you just have to narrow it down and narrow it down. And, and that's fantastic that you can help. I needed you three years ago. <laughs> I might still need you, but you know what I mean? It's just, it is because it's such a process and you have to be consistent with it all the time. And a lot of people don't have the time to be consistent with it. So how do you help them that way? Yeah, so I offer like uh, accountability calls or training. I, I help them with strategy as well. So I, don't, I do these half-day strategy sessions and basically the first hour we chat about what are your goals, what marketing platforms do you want to play around with and how much time have you got to invest if you're the one doing this into actually doing it. And then I spent two hours putting together this three-month easy flow plan and then the fourth hour we talk about it and go, all right, can you do this? Mm -hmm. And then pretty much I check in with them saying, how's it going? It's been a week or two weeks. Um, do you need to lock in a power hour to just to discuss any issues that are coming up? Do you need to outsource something to me? That's okay. Let's do it. Um, just to make things happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so I find that they yeah really appreciate that support. Because once I've had a, yeah, a few people recently in particular that have said, I just, I get overwhelmed. If I just have a path to follow, I can follow it. But mm -hmm. without that, I often get lost. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, cool. I love strategy. I love sinking my teeth into that. Yes, yeah. let's do it. Um, yeah. So often, look, it, I often say it does start with building that brand awareness. So mm -hmm. getting onto LinkedIn, getting on, or if that's the right platform, or maybe Instagram's better or Facebook's better, you've got to work at your avatar and then work out where they're hanging out uh -huh. and then be there and yes, appear consistently. So you can't just post once a month and go, why am I not getting results? Um, things like LinkedIn experts say after four times a day, you need to be posting. Um, I aim for maybe two and that's worked out well for me because people are saying I'm always top of the news feed. So oh, it does great. work yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, or if it's, yeah, Instagram, you like pick the right hashtags and make sure then the right people are seeing you, come up with little giveaways and collaborate with the people who do have bigger followings than you and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. you need to put up that branding so people have that no like trust factor with you mm -hmm. and then they're more likely to buy from you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I get the feedback, oh, yeah, and it seems like you're everywhere because they're seeing me on socials, they get an email from me, they are seeing me at networking events. Yeah. And it's a great way of saying top of mind. Mm -hmm. And I guess you just got to keep in mind that marketing is often a long game. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard anything from seven to 13 touch points before people buy from you. Oh, so wow. yeah. you, yeah, I've heard you that too. Of, <laughs> yeah, the number keeps growing. It was like seven and someone's at like 13 or something the other day. But I guess social media doesn't take much to get to 13. Mm. Um, so yeah, you need to be visible and showing up so that people will then go, Oh, this is a person I either need to work with, or if you come for conversation, you refer to other people and yeah, that's, mm. you just need to be showing up and consistently for sure. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Wow. Well, you sound like you have a wealth of knowledge. Can you dig deep into maybe some of the LinkedIn? Cause I think a lot of people are on Facebook, but there are more business people that are on LinkedIn, would you say, or would you think it's a mixture? Yeah, it's, it's more of the, yeah, the B2B, but I mean, don't forget that B2B ultimately it's still person to person. Yeah, um, so it's, yeah, I, I love hanging out on LinkedIn. I seem to be getting more engagement there than Facebook or Instagram. And I think it's because you can really branch out your professional network on there. So really make the most of your profile. Um, yes, there's the typical resume type stuff, but there's the about section really like you got like 2000 characters, which is like 400 words, really like tell your story talk about who you work with, um, mention case studies or good stats. It's so important. And even just like your little um, headliner, which is that little description that comes up under your name. Mm -hmm. Don't just use your job title. You've got um, like 120 characters. So mm -hmm. Put in as many keywords as you can in there. So I've got like health and wellness, marketing consultant, um, what have I got? Uh, strategy, training, podcast host, um, website, copy, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and whenever you comment on people's posts, that's obviously one of the first things people see as well. So that's really key to get that right. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then just a matter of, 
doing a mixture of posts. So some like long form storytelling, so sharing case studies, sharing behind the scenes, what you're doing in your business and asking those engaging questions to get people yeah, having a conversation with you. Yeah. And also um, have testimonials. So you get other people's reviews, selling what you do. It's not just all about you saying it. Yeah. Um, and then you've got videos, which people hate them, but yeah. that's really well. Can I just stop uh, you there with the videos? Yeah. Not a lot of people do videos and every, everyone says you need to do videos. What, what is that? What, is it because you, you yeah. need to be seen more or, I mean. But it, so it's, area? yeah, so there's, there's kind of two um, aspects. There's from an algorithm point of view um, with all the social media platforms, uh, because people are more likely to be engaged and stay on it longer, I mean, it helps yeah. them, uh, them the social media platform because it means you're staying on that platform, right? Yeah. Um, so you're kind of, you're rewarded by having people hanging around and watching by being boosted up the ranks. Yeah, so right. you, I mean, you think of how many friends you've got on Facebook, how many pages you're following. You can't see all that stuff. You're probably only seeing the same 10, 20 people and their businesses over and over. Yeah. And um, so videos, it does give you a bit of a boost um, coming up in that. Because obviously then the more, people, more time people are spending on them and that they're commenting, that's all going to help you out. So that's from like the technical point of view. Oh. But then from the brand awareness point of view, the human element, people are getting to know you. It's oh. not just words uh, which could be written by an offshore VA. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love yeah. mine. Yeah. Or a bot. Um, when it's coming from you, your video, they see your mannerisms. It's like me uh -huh. talking my hands a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah. Um, and so your mannerisms, your, you know, your face, your, your tone of voice, all this stuff, people really get to know you. Mm. And so it's just adds that extra thing that just a post does not do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. It's kind of like this podcast, isn't it? You know, you're doing podcasting as well. Um, is that why you started podcasting as well or is it just for fun? I mean, I, I, I should both. for me sometimes, I mean, I'm saying this, I love conversations like this. And even if it was audio or visual, I would do it any, I do it both ways because I just love the conversation. Why did yeah, you get started on it? Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I always wanted to get be on radio and I'm like, God, it'd be so much fun. And then I was a guest on the radio station, a um, community one, and I just realised all these buttons they have to press and they have to uh, so they have the segments and then go through the news. And I'm like, I don't like want to be entrusted <laughs> yeah. in managing that. So um, I heard about the podcasting thing mm -hmm. and – I procrastinated for ages about that because I'm like, I have no idea how you even begin. Like, yeah. what equipment? <laughs> how do you host it? How do you get it on Spotify? How do you, what? Oh, and so like, I um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you know. So yeah. I procrastinated for a while. And I'm like, look, I've done, like, yeah, I've always been a speaker, I guess. I did debating through school and I did um, professional speaking and training. And I've done two presenting and radio courses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I know I can speak and I can interview. But it's a techie side. So I found a little um, podcasting online course and I did that just to build the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I knew a couple of people who had podcasts, so I asked them questions too. Yeah. Um, once I got over that barrier of what I needed to do, and then, I mean, yeah, now I do podcasting webinars because yeah. I'm like, well, I've learned now. Um, but you see, yeah, it was a bit of the, the fun, bit of the branding um, with my networking, I meet so many amazing people. I'm like, oh, I've got a platform that I can just like, yeah, dig into their brain um, and I get to learn from them. They oh, get wow. the exposure. I've had podcast guests say they've had clients come on board because they've searched for them after meeting them or whatever. And the podcast episode with me has come up on the first page of Google yeah. and then people listen to it. And that's mm. been um, just like the video, they've gotten to know their voice, gotten to know the person and made oh. them think, I want to work with them. Oh. And um, yeah, so someone came out to me going, I want to be on your podcast again. And I'm like, why? She's like, oh, because I've had people wanting to work with me as a result. I go, hey, there's so many other podcasts out there. Here's at least two others you can be a yeah. guest on straight away. Yeah. Um, I can probably refer to you as well, Sean. Um, 
so there is it is a win 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 and my yeah. audience win you know they win by the awesome content that comes out mm-hmm. and uh yeah i it is look it does take a lot of a lot of time and i do get it edited elsewhere so it's a bit of a financial commitment mm-hmm. but I feel like the return of people getting to know me and I have had to work through it as well. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, I've loved it. So I won't be giving it up anytime soon. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, I need to listen to your episodes because I haven't listened to them yet. And uh, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of marketing strategies. Is that right on your podcast or? Yeah, yeah. So it's called, called Marketing and Me. So it's aimed at the health and wellness niche and yeah. basically helping the health and wellness business owners grow their business while maintaining their own health and wellness. Nice. Um, because I know a lot of people who are in that niche, but they're the ones saying I'm having a mental breakdown or I'm overweight or I'm at my that you're doing health stuff, everyone else. Yeah. So um, the episodes, a mixture of yeah, the marketing or business growth or sales, um, all different. I mean, I thought I ran out of content, but I'm never running out of content. Yeah. Um, there's always different angles. And oh, yeah. then there's also the health aspect. So mm-hmm. some topics about uh, mental health or, uh, or people just telling their awesome stories about what they've overcome to then. So mindset stuff. Yeah. It's been, um, yeah, I'm, I'm booked up to like middle of the year and I just keep meeting people through networking and go, oh, you have a story to tell. I've got to get you on the show. Yes, for sure. That's right. Yeah. That's why I do it too. And you talked about win-win and I think that's another reason I do it as well is because we're, it's a win-win conversation really. And what you said, a few people have come to me with my podcast, you know, that I've interviewed in, in my podcast, even just recently. And they've said, oh, I've actually, a couple of your network has reached out to me. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. So now that works. And it's just, you know, I'm helping my network find something that they actually need. Not necessarily what I can give them, but what they, the person that I'm interviewing can give them. And I love that. And I love what you're doing. Um, so I'll, maybe I should be on your podcast too, because uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Definitely, we'll do a podcast swap for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I love the fact, oh, you have so much knowledge, and I'm sure we can speak for days on end. Uh, but I would like to ask you one more question before we end off, and that is, what would you like the viewers or the listeners, if they're listening, to know about this conversation, and maybe one tip that you can give them on marketing? Yeah, so I I guess the avatar thing is the key um, starting point, really just knowing who you're talking to and what's keeping them up at night, what's really stressing them out, because that's what they're going to be searching for on Google, right, if they're looking for advice. And if you can kind of think of the keywords that they'll be searching for based on those pain points, you can then put that into your messaging. Because if you know who you're speaking to, when you're doing the posts, when you run your emails, your blogs, Ultimately, the right people read it going, it feels like you you know me, like you're in my brain, um, you get me, I want to work with you. Yeah. So that's why it's being, and you know, and do research if you're not quite sure how, what they're thinking, what, what the issues are. Um, like, you know, I've learned along the way, most of them, most of my niche want to DIY. So that's why I've moved more into the training going, all right, well, let me help you. Let me coach you. And then somewhere down the track, if you need help with a website copy, you know where I am. Mm-hmm. So just um, you'll get a feel for it along the way, but don't be afraid to, if, if you know, you are start get beta testers, go, I just want to get feedback on X, Y, Z. Um, if you are further along uh, and you haven't quite niched, maybe think about who your favorite customers are mm-hmm. and make that your niche. Um, mm-hmm. Because then it, it's better as well. If you have niched and you market yourself as an expert in a particular area it means that people know and come to you, you know, exactly what you're talking about. More willing to pay more, I guess, as well, because they, they know you're dedicated to their area. Mm-hmm. And um, then also you get into a real flow because you're used to working with the same people over and over. So you can even have like, you make it a lot more streamlined. Definitely. Oh, I think that's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. In, in my network and uh, in general, really, because uh, knowing your niche is very hard for people that are first starting out in a business. So thank you for that inspiration and that, that knowledge. Um, and I'd 
really, uh, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, so LinkedIn is one of the key things. Um, yeah. Just search, yeah, search for Leanne Shelton. Um, look out for the turquoise. Uh, that's me. I'm always on brand. Um, yeah. These are my nails. As you can see, video. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always on brand wearing turquoise or some shade. Also, my water bottle's all on brand today. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> look out for me there. There's obviously the, the Marketing and Me podcast, yeah. which is on Spotify, iTunes, all of that. And uh, yeah, my website's Right Time Marketing. So, right, then right with the pen, timemarketing.com.au. And uh, yeah, book in a free chat with me. I'd love to talk with you. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Leanne. Lovely to speak to you. And I'll Thank put you. all those in the show notes as well so everyone can see um, and can contact you if they need some marketing strategies in the authentic way, health and wellness. So thank you Sounds again great. for being on. And, uh, thank you. Yeah, have a great day. Uh, this is the Sean Matthews, The Real Deal. And I look forward to seeing how this episode works out. And uh, bye for now, everybody.